Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve min cost to connect all points, lead code number 1584. So we're given an array of points, which is representing integer coordinates. And these are some points on a 2D plane, where each points at i is simply an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So the cost of connecting two points, xi, yi, and xj, yj, is the Manhattan distance. Okay, usually it's the Euclidean distance, but here it is the Manhattan distance. So that's the absolute value of the distance between the x coordinates and the absolute value of the distance of the y coordinates. Okay, we need to return Turn the minimum cost to make all of the points connected and all points are connected if there's exactly one simple path between any two points okay so suppose we were given this array of points here so the first one the index 0 would be 0 0 this one 2 2 would be right here 3 10 would be right here this one right here would be 5 2 so 5 and 2 and this last one would be 7 and 0 okay so what we want is to return the the minimum cost to connect all of the points together. So one way of connecting the points would be to do this, where we combine them like this. But this is not the best way to do that, because if you drew this instead, this is going to have a smaller total distance. So we want the smallest cost to connect all the points together. So this problem breaks down into creating what's called a minimum spanning tree. Minimum because we want the smallest total distance, spanning meaning that it connects everything, and tree basically meaning that it connects everything with no cycles. So connect everything with no cycles in the minimum cost. Now, just as a little bit of theory here, if we have n equals five points here, so there's five different points, well, then a minimum spanning tree would have n minus one edges, okay? We only need to use n minus one edges. You can see that with four edges, that is going to connect everything together. If we added a fifth edge or basically an nth edge, well, that is going to induce a cycle. So a tree, is always going to have n minus one edges. Now there's two really common algorithms you would see to create a minimum spanning tree. One is prims, that's what we'll use in this video. The other is Kruskal's, and they're both very similar. They both kind of traverse the edges of the graph using a heap. Uh, but prims algorithm is generally faster. They actually have worst case the same, and we'll see what that is. Uh, but we're going to use prims algorithm to solve this problem. Now before I show you the full math here and everything involved, the intuition is actually really strong for prims. Essentially, we start at a node, so let's say this one. And well, we need to span the graph. We need to connect everything. So if we have this in our connected component so far, we need to connect something to it. Well, what would we want to connect? Well, probably not this and probably not that because this one is way closer. You would want to connect it in the smallest way. So we'd end up using this edge right here. And you could kind of have a total cost here where your cost would go up by this amount here. And so then we'd kind of add this into our group of stuff that is our component. And and now we would need to say, hey, which edge do we want to use now? We need to join stuff to our component. You can either join it to this node or to this node. And we need to use any of these new nodes that we haven't seen yet. Well, it's pretty clear that you'd probably want this one. And that is the one we would use in Prim's algorithm. So we'd select that. Your cost would kind of go up again by that distance D right there. And we'd say, okay, we have three things here. Which edge do you want to use now? The smallest way to get a new one is going to be this one. One right here. So we would select that. And finally, we're kind of stuck joining this long one here. And so the smallest way to do that, this guy is actually slightly closer. So we would end up selecting that one. And then at the end, we could check that we have seen all of the nodes. So basically, we had five to begin with. Now we've selected five, and you would return the total cost of what we selected. Okay, so that's the intuition, but to actually do this, we're gonna need a few different data structures. We would need a scene set. So this is going to be a hash set that basically stores all of the nodes that we have in our group. Remember, if I said that we have selected this one, we'd kind of want to know that in our set, we've selected that one. And what we'd actually call this is basically it's index because this point is defined by its position in this points array. And so we kind of say that we have this one, but we'll get to that shortly. And we're also going to need a minimum heap which is going to organize itself based off of the distances because we'd want the smallest distances. And the heap's going to have on it stuff that looks like this, which is the distance in the first position. That'll help it organize by the smallest distance. And then it's just the node that we're going to, which I'll kind of just call J. It's saying we can get to node J in this much distance. Now to start this off, we'd usually initialize something in the heap like 0, 0. We're saying we can get to node 0 with a distance of 0. Now each step, we'd essentially 
actually pop this off and say, okay, we're looking at this. We can get to this node in this much distance. So this node in this much distance. Have we been to this node before? So have we been here? No, our set is empty. Okay, so let's say that we've been here and essentially that means that we're selecting this. Okay, so we've selected that we've been here. We haven't really picked any edges yet because this is just the initialization. We're saying we're starting right here. We need to connect stuff to this. Which one do we want to connect? We want to put all of these in a heap. We want to put all of these edges in the heap so that way the heap can store that we can get to this node in this much distance if we ever wanted to. So we'd basically iterate over all of the other stuff or maybe just iterate over all of them and just kind of ignore this position. And we'd say, okay, for this guy here, how far does it take to get there? Well, that would mean this edge right here. And if you put it on the heap, the distance would be the Manhattan distance between these two. And if you were to put this on the heap, which I'm just gonna move over here a little bit, this is my heap here. Then we could say in a distance A, we could get over to the node of, well, whatever this node is. And that would be again marked by its index, which is one. So we could get over to node one with a distance of A. Okay, what about this node right here? Well, that is node two, so node two. We could get to that in a distance of, let me just call it B. So that would be right here. That would be a distance of B. So we can get to that. Notice that this is placed lower than this one here. Okay, A and B are numbers, but it's very clear that if this is distance A and this is distance B, that A is way, way smaller than B. And this is a min heap. That's the whole point of this thing is saying like, okay, at the top of this thing, we're always going to have the smallest distance to get to a node. Okay, and then we would basically iterate over both of these ones too. We could see that we could get to node three in a distance of, we'll call it C and we could get to node four in a distance of, we'll call it D. Okay, so we put all of those on there and we'd essentially pop this off and say, okay, well, let's do this again. What can we get to in the smallest distance? Well, firstly, have we been here before? Because there's a chance that we've actually already seen this node. Well, no, we have not because we can see that in the set. And so we'd add that basically saying that we have now selected this because we can get there in the smallest distance. Okay, and you'd also kind of want to keep track of of the total cost that you're having. Maybe we initialize that at zero and this would kind of go up by that distance A there. So I'm just gonna kind of write that as A. That would actually be a number that you could kind of just accumulate there. Okay, so we can get to node one now and we've selected that, basically meaning that we've actually selected this edge. Now from this node here, well, we've already put on the heap this edge, this edge, and this edge. So we know if we wanted to, we could get to this node from any of those, but we might prefer to get to this node. And so we'd want to put on this edge and this edge and this edge onto the heap. Okay, well, you can quite clearly see that if we called this E and this one F and this one G, then you'd probably prefer F, right? That's gonna be the new smallest one. If we put all of these new edges onto the heap, the smallest one would be F getting to the position of five two, which is index three. So we can get to three in a distance of F and you'd also put E and G on there. Let's just kind of put them over here for now. Okay, so we would do this again. We'll take the smallest distance off the heap and say, okay, we can get to three in a distance of F. Have we been to three before? No, that's not in our set. And so we'll basically select that there, put it in our set. And that is this position right here. Okay, so we're selecting that essentially with this node distance of F here, that would be F. And our cost would kind of go up by the cost of F because we've selected that. Okay, so we've selected this new node here and you can picture we kind of already had this, this, and this, as well as this and this on the heap, but we're also now allowing to get to this one. That would be adding this edge as well as this edge. And if we say this one has a distance of H and this one has a distance of I, then okay, we could put those onto the heap here. Okay, I'm not gonna fully finish this off here because there's a lot of popping and you get the idea, but essentially we'd take the smallest node distance here off from the heap. And as long as we haven't seen that node before, so as long as it's a new node, not in our set, we would add that to our set, basically accumulate our cost here. And we'd end up ultimately taking this edge as well as this edge. And you could return kind of that total cost there. Okay, so that's the idea. 
Okay, so we'll firstly just get n is the length of the points and our total cost, which is what we're trying to return, that is going to initialize at zero. And we need a scene set. So this is basically all of the nodes that we've currently joined up together. And we also need a min heap, which I'm just gonna call min heap. And in Python, that's actually gonna be an array and each element on the heap, as you saw, is gonna be a tuple of essentially the distance and the node index i. We're just going to initialize this to say in a distance of zero, we can start and join up the index of zero. We can say we can just get that one for free because you need to start somewhere. Okay, then what we'll do is while the length of the scene set is less than n, so essentially as soon as it gets to n, that means we've selected all of the n points, we've connected everything together, so that's when we would return. We have a distance as well as an index position marking a node from the heap. So heap Q, you actually have to import this, at least you should import heap Q. We'd heap Q dot heap pop from the min heap that we created. So that is going to take off one of these tuples and essentially just kind of unpack those positions. So if this is the distance and this is the index, then we get the distance and the index. It is very, very important that the distance is marked first because that is how the heap organizes by the smallest distances. If we've seen this before then we're not interested if i is in scene then we can simply continue otherwise we'll say okay let's actually add it to our group because we can get there in the smallest distance scene dot add the index i that node and we're using an edge and so the total cost is going to go up by that distance we can get to this node from this distance and we're using that edge so the total cost is going to go up by that distance okay right now we're just using the index to mark the node but we generally want its xi and its y I, which is simply just getting that from points at i. So we're at an xiyi. And for each of its potential neighbors, so for j in the range of n, well, that's going over all of them. And so you definitely wouldn't want to use the ones, again, the ones we've already seen before. So as long as j is not in scene, then we might be interested in this connection. If we're talking about point j, well, then that is xj, yj is points at j. Okay, so then we can get to that distance in a neighbor distance, we'll call it. Well, it's the absolute value of xi minus xj plus the absolute value of yi minus yj. We can get to this node j from our node i in this distance. That is the formula for that. Now we'll have to put this onto the heap. So heap q dot heap push onto our min heap with the tuple of, again, the distance has to be first. We can get to it in a neighbor distance uh, to node j. We can get to node j in a distance of this. Again, very important that the distance and the index is matching what you wrote up here. And it's very, very important that the distance is first so that it sorts by the minimum distance. Okay, so after we've kind of completed this whole loop here, after we've collected our end things into the scene set, well, then we've done that in the minimum total cost, which we've accumulated. We'd have our minimum spanning tree, but we're really only interested in the distance, the total distance for it, which is just total cost. So we could return that. If you were to run this, this will work. Okay, so the time complexity is a little bit interesting. Let me write it down and then we'll talk about it. It's actually going to be big O of N squared log of N. How do we come up with that? N is the number of points and N squared is the number of edges in the complete graph. So not our minimum spanning tree. If you were to actually join all of this stuff together and connect every single edge that could exist in the graph, there would be N squared many edges. Why? Because there's N points. And so every point could be connected to every other point. That's essentially an N times N, which is an N squared. So why is it n squared log of n? Well, the log of n is actually more like a log of n squared as well. Uh, but in math, you could actually kind of take this squared out and kind of put it out at the front to make it a constant kind of like this. And so that's a constant. And so you don't need to worry about that. So it's essentially the number of edges in the graph, which I'm going to change this. It's basically E log E. Why is that? So if we're putting all of these E edges onto the heap and we basically need to take one off every single time here and we're not guaranteed to get a new node every single time. That's kind of why we have this condition here. We need to ignore the edges to nodes we've already seen before. Essentially, we're slowly popping off the stuff we're putting onto the heap. If you're putting like E edges onto the heap, 
and you're just taking one off every single time, that's essentially gonna be a multiplier of the number of edges we're going to kind of push and pop from the heap. So that's where the majority of the time complexity comes from. And for a very similar reason, the space complexity is going to be big O of N squared. Why is that? Well, if you're putting, again, if this is the number of edges onto the heap, well, you're simply storing those things on the heap. And so that's gonna be an N squared. You don't need that log N because that's just the runtime it takes for pushing and popping. So it's just gonna be we're taking up N squared space. All right, I know a very interesting problem, definitely one of the hardest ones, but really, really interesting and very useful. Drop a like if you found this helpful, guys. I hope it was and have a great day. Bye-bye.